from the lives of our saints. But on the 5th of May, our church commemorates the feast day of Saint Irene. The following are some details of her life and works. Born during the reign of Constantine the Great in the Persian city of Magdus, Irene was the daughter of Licinius, governor of the region. Licinius was a ruler of little humour, with even less understanding and with an iron will that was in the tradition of the Medes and the Saracens. He reared his only child Irene in an ornate palace. Accordingly, she studied for ten years under the tutelage of Apelanios, an educator renowned for his wisdom and intellect. According to Apelanios, who was also Irene's biographer, an angel of the Lord appeared to Irene in a dream when she was a young woman and told her that she had been chosen to be the voice of the Messiah among her own people. When she told the venerable Apollonius of her dream, he stood in awe. When he saw it in his proper perspective, he warned the girl that the road ahead would be strewn with obstacles and that the journey would be a difficult one. She knew that her faith would sustain her, however. Licinius at first attributed her new eagerness for Christianity to the whim of youth, and he advised her to give up this madness. When her declarations for Christ continue, he sternly warned her that he could tolerate no more. When she failed to comply, he flew into a rage, threatening to have her trampled in the arena by wild horses. Apollonius related that while Licinius was at the arena arranging for the stampede to take his daughter's life, he was somehow accidentally trampled himself. Irene hurried to the side of her father, and as he, as he lay mortally wounded, she prayed to the Lord that he be spared. Her prayer had been answered. Licinius recovered, repented, and was baptized into the Christian faith. For this, he was promptly removed from office by the Persian king Sedition. Turning to Irene, whom he considered a sorceress, Sedition stated that he would restore her father to his post and allow her to go free if she disavowed Christ. She declined and was thereupon cast into prison. There she was subjected to inhuman torture and was given just enough food to sustain her until the next flogging. After Sedition's death, she was released. Miraculously, regaining her health, she carried the message of the Messiah throughout the land, converting thousands to Christianity. Three consecutive successes to Sedition all failed to halt Irene's advancement of Christianity. Further imprisonment, torture and abuse of mind and body having failed, it was decided that Irene should be put to death. She was beheaded on the 5th of May, 384.